Scribe? Please, wait. Are you Scribe Alhatham? <laughs> That's me. Is something the matter? I'm in a hurry. Uh, no. I was just surprised to see you here. I had heard that the sages were looking for you not long ago, but I didn't know what for. And, um, also, please don't bring outside guests into the academia. Outside guests? How did you arrive at such a conclusion? Your groundless inference shames the Haravatat Darshan. What, what did you say? I'm the top student in Haravatat, and I earned third place at the last inter-Darshan debate. Don't look down on me! That wasn't my intention. As your Haravatat senior, I just assumed that you possessed a greater aptitude for critical thinking. Look, based on what you already know, the purpose of my return and the reason they're here should be obvious. Is that so? Wait a moment. Let me think. Don't tell me the answer. The sages search for you. A blonde-haired traveler. Outside guests. So, from the start... The sages weren't looking for you, but this traveler? And you were gone from the academia for so long because... Hey, shh. Yes, you've proven yourself as the top student in Haravatat. I surmise you've arrived at the correct conclusion. As I expected. Please forgive me. I wasn't thinking clearly just now. Thank you for getting me back on track. It's nothing. We'll be on our way then. All right. Thank you for your contributions to the Academia, Scribe. Uh, what the heck just happened now? What did he just guess? I'm afraid I don't know either. You have no idea? Mm-hmm. He convinced himself of whatever truth he came up with. That is the so-called pride of a scholar. If someone questions their academic facility, they will instantly feign understanding to keep up appearances. Nowadays, the academia is rampant with this type of scholar. Their obvious farces of intellect only serve to highlight themselves as fools. Wow, so there are special ways to deal with smart people. We don't even need to make up our own excuses. We shouldn't waste any more time. It would be problematic if we missed our window of opportunity. Let's go. Is this the Academia's library? Indeed. Known as the House of Dana, it is quite possibly the most extensive special collections library in Tavat. Uh, there are a lot of students going through here. Is it really okay just to waltz right in? The Academia marches to a fast beat, especially since it's Nagarbaha Day. They're all occupied with their own matters. Just act natural. Now. Hurry along. <laughs> What's this platform for? It's a lift that academia personnel use to access higher floors. Are we gonna take it then? The Grand Sage's office is up there somewhere. No, not right now. We can't guarantee that we won't run into the Great Sage. Let's step back and observe for now. You think the Grand Sage will exit from there? And after he does, we'd sneak past him? Oh, Paimon thinks that's really dangerous. Who knows? However... If we can confirm Azar's current location, our operation will be much safer if we... Allow me to offer you a hint. 
If you wish to know his location, look behind you. Do not tell me you believed the Academia would not grow suspicious of you after such a prolonged absence, scribe. An eyewitness had informed me of your whereabouts, so I came to personally welcome you. Great Sage, I didn't expect you to care so much about me. I'm truly flattered. I'm sure. But compared to you, I am far more interested in these two unexpected guests. You are the Traveler and Paimon, correct? It's a pity that only now have I been afforded the opportunity to formally meet two of Sumeru's most esteemed guests. I do apologize for my lack of decorum. Excellent. You immediately initiated discussion instead of attempting to prepare some perfunctory excuse. You clearly understand the situation at hand, and have no intention of making a reckless stand. The foot traffic here renders this place unsuitable for discussion. Please, follow me to my office. This place is crawling with guards. There's no way out for us. All right then, Traveler. What did you wish to discuss with me? Today is Niagarbaha Day, so I still have many responsibilities to attend to. There is little time for idle chit-chat before I detain you all. Hmm. You seem to know quite a bit about our endeavors. If that is so, then you should be praising our great work, rather than using your trivial misgivings in a futile attempt to sway me. Trivial? Then tell me, what do the Fatui want from me? Pfft, <laughs> worthless. Those are all completely worthless. Benefits, divine power. These materialistic words do nothing but debase our great work. Creating a god. Yes, we are using human wisdom to create a god. If humanity cannot attain omniscience and omnipotence, then we shall create a god to reveal them. This is the pinnacle of human wisdom. We shall regain a god's guidance at long last. No longer will we flounder in the interminable void of consciousness and knowledge. Even Ermin's soul will be freed from its plight. For our nation of scholars, this is the ultimate aspiration. No cost is too great to realize it. You will never understand the rapture of having a god be born within your very hands. With your degree of knowledge, you cannot even comprehend such an emotion. Gods exist on a plane that far eclipses humanity's. Lesser Lord Kusanali. What can she even do? Care for the people? Fend off sandstorms? Fabricate silly fairy tales? <laughs> These are but child's play for the academia. Does that make us equal to the gods? We are a people favored by Greater Lord Rukadevata. Though I may have personally not seen it, our forefathers bore witness to true wisdom. The ascension of the Lesser Lord has brought nothing but bewilderment to the scholars. They all ask, is that truly what true wisdom is supposed to look like? With that in mind, it is better to keep her isolated in the sanctuary of Suristhana, so our academy will not become embroiled in turmoil. Do you really think that only the super smart or powerful should be able to call themselves gods? As per your judgment, Grand Sage, they are indeed dangerous individuals. Not only are they acting against the academia, but their ideologies have the potential to lead scholars astray. Looks like there really was merit in my assignment. Alhatham? Are you talking about us? Anyway, I've brought them to the academia as ordered. But it took some time and trouble. Oh, that reminds me. 
Here is the investigation report you had requested. It's a summary of my time spent with the Traveler, an array of information about him ready for your perusal. Oh, hey, Thum. So you're... You're still on the Academia side! We finally started to trust you! Hmm... Excellent. Detailed contents with no errors. I would expect nothing less than an immaculate report from the scribe. As it is near Garbaha Day, I'll enter the information on you into the Akasha. Surely you know what that means. We'll be monitored, just like Sino. With the Akasha's calculation prowess, all of your actions will be predicted with an accuracy of at least 98%. Furthermore, your data will be updated in real time whenever new information presents itself. To put it into words you can understand, wherever you go, you will be walking under an invisible leash. This is Sumeru's greatest penalty for dishonest persons. Are you not familiar with the concept that great responsibility begets an equally great suspicion? In any case, you are Sumeru's most concerning external variable. Locking you down will greatly decrease the chance of any undesirable outcomes coming to pass. You're despicable! Despicable? Hmm. Perhaps from your perspective, but... I suppose you had mentally prepared yourselves for this, no? Your ploy was to sacrifice the Traveler here, was it not? Uh... Lord Azar, I know what you're trying to say, but I've been following your plan this entire time. Why are you doubting me at this juncture? Huh. <laughs> Must I delineate your entire plan? Very well. I will spell things out. First off, I received an eyewitness report that you were spotted with the Traveler at Caravan Rebat. However, you immediately departed for the desert and escaped surveillance range. Judging by the time, you all likely encountered the truant General Mahamatra in the desert. Am I correct? <sighs> Maybe Paimon shouldn't have mentioned Sino just now. The Academia had not received correspondence from its scribe for a prolonged time. You were also in the company of the Traveler, a close associate of Lesser Lord Kusanali and General Mahamatra Sino, who had defected from the Academia. With their instigation, what was the probability that you would betray the Academia? Rationally speaking, 50%? 70%? What do you think? Regardless, that's only a guess. The facts are that I've brought the Traveler right before you, and I gave you my report. Indeed, your boldness deserves praise. To think that despite status as an outlander, the Traveler is still willing to sacrifice for the sake of your plan. If I'm correct, you have a contingency plan to save Lesser Lord Kusanali and ruin our great work. Sneak into the Academia on Nia Garbaha Day, using Alhatham's status as the scribe, for there is a good chance that an opportunity to save the Lesser Lord will arise. Should your intentions be discovered, Alhatham will turn traitor and sacrifice the Traveler, thus proving his innocence. He can then stay inside the Academia and continue searching for a way to proceed forward. As for Sino, According to the Akasha's calculations, he will soon return to the Academia and confront me in person. I suppose this is also a part of your plan? <laughs> You'll see me as a traitor regardless of what I say, no? Even if you impugn me, it would have little effect on you all. You misunderstand. Losing our scribe would irreparably damage the Academia's regular operations and the development of Sumeru's future academic systems. However, under the current circumstances, even that is trivial compared to what we stand to gain from our great work. You said that I betrayed the Academia, 
But you, Azar, you've betrayed all of Sumeru, betrayed its Archon. Hmm. So flight is turned to fight at long last. Guards! Well, what do we have here? So you stole that divine knowledge capsule. Traitor! You traitor! <laughs> Even the most rational scholar will yearn for the power of a god in a moment of desperation. Aren't you doing the exact same thing as me, Althatham? Unfortunately for you, no god will lend you their power. Azor! <laughs> He has gone completely insane. Take him to the Matra and exile him to Aru village. Then find someone to take these two to the confinement room. I'll deal with them later. Grand Sage, we've finished all required preparations for Nyagarbaha Day. We may begin to enter the capsules now. Excellent. You may begin. Apart from that, we still have yet another goal in the first stage of our operation, which is to send the Traveler to the confinement room. What? Why do we want to get him locked up on purpose? He's always been the person the Sages are most afraid of, as well as the greatest obstacle to their successful implementation of their plan. They are very aware of the risk he poses to them. Once the Traveler is imprisoned, the Sages will likely think that everything is under control. And with their guard down, the next phase of our plan will have a much higher chance of success. <laughs> I can already see the pompous looks on their faces. Oh, that's a super tricky plan, but Paimon still thinks it's not really worth it. That isn't the only reason, of course. He has a more important task once he's in confinement. According to the Academia scholars in Rahman's custody, Lesser Lord Kusanali has sealed off her consciousness in the Akasha ever since she was captured by the Doctor. That way, they can't pry any more information from her. Even if we break into the Sanctuary of Suristhana, it will take time to awaken Lesser Lord Kusanali's consciousness. We need to do that in advance. So our job is to wake up Nahida! Okay, totally worth getting thrown and jailed for! The confinement room is inside the Academia, close to the Sanctuary of Suristhana. 
It's a completely enclosed space and you won't be receiving any visitors. I'll work with Raman scholars to make some modifications to your Akasha terminal. Once you're in, get as close as you can to Lesser Lord Kusanali and try to connect to her consciousness. However, as for whether she'll actually wake up, that will depend on our luck. terminal today. It's the one that all hate them modified. I thought they'd take our Akasha terminals when they locked us up in here. Hmm, were they being careless? All right, so what now? Sounds easy enough. We can finally talk with Nahida after all this time. Let's do it. There's a light flashing on your Akasha terminal. It's almost like... <gasps> the faster it blinks, the better the signal! Here? Hmm. No signal again. Is it getting jammed? Whoa, it's Mora! Ooh, Mora! Uh, no, Paimon, we're not here to hunt for treasure!
Nahira! Hey, Nahira! When did it first start? Oh, right. It started from the moment I was born. I want to become a worthy Archon. So I've kept studying. Kept listening to my people and their hearts. Kept looking for a way to save Ermin's soul. So I can catch up. Catch up to Greater Lord Rukutavata. But I'm stuck in the sanctuary of Sarasthana. The sages are creating a god to replace me. And I'm forced to lock my consciousness in this boundless darkness. Nahida! Nikita! It's so quiet here. Now that I think of it, I don't think I've ever actually listened to my own inner voice. Do Archons have them? Should Archons have them? Have I been... doing the right thing? Am I... really not needed? How do I... really feel about all of this? It's... so quiet here. Since you're the god of wisdom... You've known the answers to all these questions since the very beginning, haven't you? Who... are you? Whose voice is that? It sounds familiar. You're right, though. I won't... I won't ignore my own voice anymore. Nahira! <gasps> Nahira? We're here to rescue you. Are you alright? I'm fine. It's just... When I think of everything that's happened to me, I feel really angry now. <laughs> you should have been angry ages ago.
Nilu, are you sure about this? You're taking such a great risk for them. I'm sure, and I'm going. You know that I don't like to pass up any opportunity to dance, and this one is especially important. <sighs> All right. You seem to have a lot of trust in them, so I won't say more on the subject. But if anything happens, the few of us here may not be able to help you. Don't worry. They've been through worse. Everything's going to be fine. All right. You know, if you really do get arrested, we'll do everything we can to get you back. Be careful, even if it's only for our sakes. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Zubair. You're so very kind. Always remember that your safety comes first. Don't forget that you're the star of Zubair Theater! Going. Nervous? Definitely more than usual. But it's because I'm worried I won't dance well enough. It's okay. Just focus on your performance. We'll take care of everything else. <laughs> you sure know how to talk. Taking all the credit, even though we came here together to help out. Well, thank you both. I'll have to treat you to a meal after all this ends. I really, really appreciate all of your help. Ooh, that sounds great. Huh. How can we say no to that? All right, let's get back to business. Nilu, we'll be here to keep people from going to the academia so they don't interrupt your performance. I was planning on telling them something like, the academia's been conducting a weird experiment, and some of their test subjects escaped. It's really dangerous there, so stay away. Oh, you couldn't think of anything better? Oh. Oh well, I guess it does sound like something the Academia would do. <laughs> I think it sounds great. I'm counting on you guys. Don't worry, it'll be a piece of cake. You really like to play cool in front of Nilu. Hey, cut it out. This isn't the time to chat about stuff like that. Hey, Nilu! Sorry, it's great to see you, but I'm...